Hello folks, this is Sula here, and you're listening to another commentary video for League of Legends, this one featuring Ramus. This is from a ranked game of five, and the replay was sent to me by Varus Knox. So this is going to feature Varus playing as Ramus with Noobstar, well, that is Metallion, who uses the username Noobstar, playing as Misfortune, with Diva playing as Rise, with Fekul playing as Lux, and Sunrise playing as Xinjiao. I think it's Fekul. I'm going to go with Fekul. It might be Fekul. I actually don't know this player. I think he's one of Metallion's friends, um, but he is part of this group. So this is a full full custom game of five for ranked play. You don't see too many ranked fives games, so fortunately I had the chance to cast this one. And the team that they're up against are people that I, of course, don't know. And we have a Teemo, a Nivea, Warwick, Malphite, and Malzahar players. So here we are. You can see here's a starting screen. It looks like Varus is going to be the jungler as normal for... A ranked game, Ramus is almost always played as a jungler. The other team has a Warwick jungler, so it looks pretty standard. And uh, there's the Clairvoyance coming in from the uh, Fekul, the Lux player. So you can see, you can click on the enemy team, you can see their items. Nice job, looks like they managed to get almost everybody on that Clairvoyance. Everybody except the Malphite player. So let's see where they go. Welcome to uh, let's see, yeah, they have to figure out the lanes. Now, I have not seen this game ahead of time, so I'll be watching it along with you guys. I'm not 100% sure what's going to happen, so I will probably miss kills in side lanes. I'm going to do my best to try to follow what's going on, but I'll be watching along with you. And uh, I'm assuming that Varus is going to have a pretty good game, or at least this is going to be a good team game. Otherwise, I don't think he would have sent me the replay, but I have not seen this either. Anyway, on that note, as far as sending replays, a lot of you have sent me replays. I've actually gotten, in the last week, somewhere something like 10 to 15 different replays from various people. I've tried to take a look at them. I've been able to view some of them. Obviously, I don't have time to cast them all. I'm sorry if I haven't been able to give feedback to everybody, but as I've said a number of times before, there are a lot more of you than they are of me, so it does make it difficult in terms of getting back to everybody. So I'll try my best, but if you don't hear back from me, it's it's not because I didn't get your replay. I probably did. I just didn't have the time to view it or didn't have the time to get back to you. Or, I mean, I'm trying to view them, but I, I probably won't have a chance to get to all of them. And I am getting pretty close to a 1,000 subscribers now, so there's these videos are generating more interest than they did initially. So anyway, that's just my little bit there. Okay, it looks like, I'm guessing that in terms of the lanes, that Metallion's Misfortune and Diva's Rise are going to be solos. Oh, another thing I'll mention, in case you're wondering, well, why is everybody standing around here? It's very standard in, in higher level play. You need to protect your jungler so the other team doesn't run in and try to kill your jungler. For instance, Ramus pretty much has to start at the Golem, that is the blue buff. He pretty much has to start there to be effective. So they had... Misfortune they had rise over here in order to protect Varus to make sure the enemy team didn't just run in and kill him And you also saw Metallion's Misfortune start the Golem buff if you notice the Golem attacked him first That was to prevent it from doing quite as much damage to Varus So you see they're able to preserve a little bit of damage so he takes takes a little bit less damage there uh, He probably would have finished the Golem at around 200 health instead of around 300 if they hadn't done that So anyway, that's why you do that um, and that's what's going on there at the start of the game so anyway, in terms of lanes, oh, look, Malphite, there's a Malphite up here, so it looks like this team has a roaming Malphite. The roaming metagame is very popular right now in ranked, so this Malphite is presumably going to, I'm just guessing, I haven't seen this, presumably going to roam around from lane to lane. Uh, or maybe they're just laning two up here, but probably not. Probably this Malphite's going to roam between lanes. And then they'll have an Anivia solo lane top, uh, Malzahar solo lane middle, and then a Teemo solo lane bottom. So the goal for Varus' team here is to wreck this Teemo, because this is where they have the advantage right now, 2v1 down here. If Fekul can hit his bindings with Lux, that is if he can if he can bind Teemo in place, and then Sunrise can charge in with Xinjiao, they should be able to do a ton of damage to that Teemo. Teemo being a very squishy champ. And he started boots, so he didn't start with a Doran's item or anything like that. Alright, now I've done some videos with Ramus in the past. Ramus hasn't changed that much since I did those videos, but just for those of you who, who might not have seen that before, in terms of building Ramus, the, the standard starting build for Ramus is cloth armor and five health pots. You can see Varus did that. Start at blue, then go from blue to wolves, then go from wolves to wraiths, and then e from wraiths go either to lizard or down to mini golems. You can see it looks like Varus went decided to go to mini golems first, but that's generally your jungle path. You drink the red pots as you go through the jungle. 
jungle. In terms of skilling, um, you put your first point in his Ramus' W, defensive ball curl, because it gives you extra armor and magic resist, and due to Ramus' passive, you can see here, Ramus' shell converts his armor into attack damage, converts 25% of his armor into attack damage. By uh, scaling, skilling his defensive ball curl at, at level 1, you get extra attack damage as well as armor when you're using it, so that allows you to get through the jungle faster. So you put your first point in W, you put your second point in Q in his power ball, that lets you travel through the jungle faster to get from place to place. Usually put your third point in W again to get more armor, which translates into more attack damage. And then you put your fourth point, usually in E, in his, ta in his taunt, so that then you can go to other lanes and start going after enemy champs. So generally that's the path that people do. Um, Generally, that's the way that people play Ramus. At least, that's the way I've done him. And this is also a very standard first buy from Varus, going back to get boots, some extra health pots, and some wards. And putting a ward right over here at Dragon is usually where you're going to want to stick one of your wards. Anyway, at this point, though, it's really pretty free. I mean, you can go in multiple different paths here. Right now, Varus has a chance to go for different lanes. There's a nice clairvoyance from uh, who is, who's got the clairvoyance feckle on that Warwick. So now they've spotted where the enemy jungler is. He's doing his red buff. So that gives them very useful information. Varus is free to go to any lane right now. It looks like he's just going to go back and do wolves, pick up a little bit extra experience. Um, now, he could go top, and that would probably help out D.Va, but even if he goes top, notice that they'll only have a two-on-two, -two, so that's probably not his best opportunity in terms of trying to get a kill. He probably has a better chance either going here mid, if he can uh, come here and join up with Metallion's Misfortune. That would then make the lane... Um, yeah. That would be a 2v1 matchup there, or if he can get down here in the bottom lane and get a... get. A, come in for a gank on this Teemo, they could have a 3-on-1 advantage there. So that's probably where their best chance is. Looks like Sunrise has taken a lot of damage, though. Uh, not 100% sure if that light bar is accurate, but oh well. Um, I get this, the replay isn't always 100% uh, accurate on the, on the, on the uh, light bars, if you've seen these before. So anyway, Varus looks like he didn't see any opportunities to get a kill, so he went to do Wolves, went back to do Wraiths, just picking up extra experience where he could. I'm not, not really sure where he is right now. Uh, one thing that would be a good option is just going to place a ward at Dragon. That that Because he has the two wards, that extra sight helps a lot. Um, let's see. Oh, or he's looks like he's going to go for this Malzahar here. Yep, there we go. There's the slope of Misfortune. Nice flash. There's the taunt. Going to hold him in place. Now, if they can just get a little bit more damage on this Malzahar. Nope, looks like they're not going to kill him. Nice job there, though, by, by Varus. That's exactly what you want to do. Why I recommend taking Flash on Ramus. You want to Flash in and then Powerball into the person you're going after. Uh, so that's generally the idea. Flash in, Powerball. The Powerball uh, knocks them back and slows. Then you immediately Taunt. And then uh, if you're level uh, 6, you can use your Tremors. If Varus had been level 6... Oh, he should have put down a ward there, Dragon, I think. Oh, well. Um, now, they, Warwick is coming in here to gank bottom. And Varus is going to come in here. Looks like Sunrise got taken down. But there's the taunt. And, uh, or not uh, not Sunrise. Speckle got taken down. There's the taunt. And together, they're able to combine. Uh, counter gank that Warwick. There's Team of Mushroom going to hit them. Uh, going to do a lot of damage. Probably stop them. Um, yep, see... That mushroom was pretty instrumental in getting that kill on Sunrise, so uh, not able to prevent a kill there. And then another kill up in, uh, another death up in top lane, so that's not a great start there for this particular team. But Varus did exactly what he was supposed to do, that is, the enemy team was pushing forward. Pushing forward there, you could see they had uh, they had their, their jungler, Warwick, come down here. And while they were chasing back towards this tower, that meant that they were exposed to a counter gank. And so Varus came in, rolled, powerballed in here behind them, and was able to get the kill on... Uh, which player was that? On their Warwick player. So, uh, overall, the enemy team definitely came out ahead there, but uh, nice play from Varus nonetheless. They're doing well in top lane because, uh, well, apparently that Malphite's not roaming. Apparently he's just permanently in top, so this is just a two-person lane. Uh, D.Va did get killed there, but overall, the fact that he's... Uh, yeah, and you can see they've, they've shut down D.Va's farm a lot, too. He only has 12 minion kills. But, I mean, that's going to happen when it's a 2v1 lane. If, they, if you want to permanently put two people in one lane, then, you know, you can shut down a solo in that lane. The counter is you're giving up, uh, you're, they're giving up the solo lane for Nivea as well. So their low farming should be lower too. Yeah, Nivea only 22. Uh, I mean, so they are winning the farm in this lane, but, um, you know, that experience is getting cut in half. And that means that poor Teemo is being left out to dry down there in bottom lane. Although Teemo seems to be handling that. Yeah, Teemo seems to be doing pretty well. He's been able to farm and... Go 2-0 in that last exchange there. So I guess it's working out pretty well for the team on the top side of the map, the purple team right now. Alright, anyway, let's see. Uh, Varus went back and picked up his blue buff. It was up again. 
Uh, he picked up the red. Notice, you see the red here? Oh, it looks like, uh, looks like Molzar knew he was there. He picked up the red from killing Warwick, so that's why that buff is still has a duration left on it. Otherwise, that probably would have worn out by now. So that's what's going on there. In any case, over here, oh, look at this. Warwick looks like Warwick's trying to go for Dragon along with Teemo. But because they've got this ward here, Vision Ward, that means that they're going to be able to, uh, well, this team has a good chance to come in here and try to counter gank that. Look, yep, here's Sunrise waiting to come in. Metallion Feckel. Uh, Mushroom's going to give them Vision, going to let them know that they're there. But uh, there we go. There's the Light Finding from Lux. And uh, did they get that Dragon? I'm not sure which team got that one. Uh, not 100% sure. Maybe you guys watching in the comments will be able to tell. Um, I don't think think they got the dragon i think the other team got it but they were able to clean up two kills so that's a pretty even exchange there overall dragon is usually considered to be worth two kills so overall relatively even exchange there i think but nice response by the by uh, varus's team here um having vision here I, I don't know who it was that bought that vision ward oh unfortunately diva getting killed in top lane so yeah that 2v1 lane has been giving him a lot of problems uh so it looks like varus is going to come up here and try to cover this lane right now and uh, I'm assuming they're going to go back and just return to lanes here, uh, able to get in some damage on this tower because of the two kills. Uh, not really, maybe just a little. Uh, looks like Feckle's going to come up here with Varus and hold this lane until Diva's Rise is back from, uh, back, from, uh, back from death there. So anyway, in terms of farming, nobody really free farming all that well. You can see we're at the 10 minute mark. Uh, Malzahar is highest and he only has 51. So nobody really farming all that great, to be perfectly honest, at this point in time. There has been a quite a bit of action though. Uh, I mean, you could understand understand when you're in the 2v1 lane you're not going to farm as well but uh, uh, let's see Metallion a little low on farm there uh, compared to what would be ideal so overall not too bad let's see in terms of itemizing uh, Metallion's bought the double Doran's Blades that's pretty standard Rise needs to get his tier of the goddess early on also pretty standard there um, Boots and a Sapphire Crystal I wonder what Lux is building maybe a Catalyst there uh, uh, Sunrise has just bought boots and uh, to go with his Doran shield. Still buying there. Oh, here comes the Molzahar ult on D.Va. Looks like D.Va's just barely going to manage to get out of that. Can they counter gank this? No, not going to be able to. So nice escape there from D.Va. Escape with about 50 HP left. Just having enough health to survive. And then in terms of uh, Varus here, you can see he bought Heart of Gold there on his ne on his uh, most recent trip back to base. A nice buy, nice item to pick up there. Uh, gives you the passive, it gives you extra gold, gives you health and armor. And let's face it, for a tank like Ramus, health and armor are probably the two most important stats you want to get on him. Again, remembering that his passive converts extra armor into extra attack damage. So armor is always pretty good to get on Ramus. Although the enemy team is pretty heavy on magic damage. Yeah, this this enemy team is mostly magic damage, though. So, uh, yeah, Teemo's building magic damage. Anivia is, of course, magic damage. Warwick's ult is magic damage. Malphite's a seismic shard uh, deals magic damage. And Walzahar is all magic damage. So if they stack magic resist, they'll be in pretty good shape. Anyway, Varus sitting up for a gank here. Notice he's charging his powerball in the brush. Powerball, oh, hits a mushroom there. That's trouble. That's going to slow him down. Can he manage to get over here and clear up this Teemo? Yes. Oh, but the Teemo flashing away. Very, very nice play from that Teemo. Uh, if he if he had not flashed away from that, he would have been taunted, and he almost certainly would have been killed there. So really nice play. Mushroom saving him here, then flashing out of that Ramus taunt. Very nice play from Nax Naxle Nax Lebnik. Wow, that's that's quite a name there. But uh, yeah, really nice play, and that that flash coming in, uh, going. Eh saving him really well there. Anyway, now it looks like Feckle's up here in top lane, and Malzahar has come up here, and together with that Malphite, they are winning, uh, they are able to get that kill. Malzahar ult, very, very strong in a one-on-one -on -one matchup. So this, the other two lanes are going pretty well for Varus's team, but this top lane has really been trouble so far. And, An ally has been slain. And D.Va gets taken down, where was that, oh, and a double kill in bottom lane, wow, so that's not going well. This Teemo player, wow, 4-1, out to a really good start, so yeah, they're in a lot of trouble here, they're, they're definitely behind in this game, 7-3 uh, to three is pretty far behind in kills, and uh, I think the other team's winning in farm, too, yeah, I think the other team's out farming them, not by a lot, but by a little, Sunrise in particular, not, not farming all that great, D.Va has just been, D.Va, see, this is one reason why the 2v1 has really worked out for the other team, you can see Diva has just been behind the curve the whole game. He got off to the rough start. He only has the 29 minion kills, and so he's just been behind the whole game. And as you know, in League of Legends, it's really hard once you get behind to catch back up again, since this is such a snowball game. 
All right, anyway, Varus picked up a second Heart of Gold. Um, I've seen a lot of people are doing this right now. This is very popular in the current League of Legends metagame. That is just stacking Heart of Golds uh, the, for the extra health, the extra armor, and again, that passive, five gold, extra 10 seconds. If you watch his gold counter down here, you can see it increases very quickly, faster than your standard gold counter would go up. So, um, particularly on a tanky jungler like Ramus, getting that passive gold can help out quite a bit. And uh, right there, Varus was simply covering the lane until one of the solos could get back and uh, start claiming that experience again. Right. All right, over here, the other team put down a Sight Ward. They're going to kill that while their Vision Ward is there. I think their Vision Ward's about to die, but they could still see that ward there. Uh, now Metallion's the one up here in the top 2v1 lane. Interesting. Interesting stuff there, to say the least. Uh, let's see, where is Varus going right now? I guess he's going, maybe he's going to do blue, something like that. Looks like he's heading over here to try to do his blue buff. Um, down here in the bottom lane, Teemo has been by himself most of the game, but uh, has been handling that really well. Doesn't seem to be having too much trouble. You can see he's 4-1, and he's got pretty good farm, uh, especially for being in a 2v1 lane almost the whole time. Anyway, now Varus is coming here to gank. Um, nice job, look at that, interrupting Malzahar ult to save Metallion there, um, to try to protect him. Really, really well done there. Now going after, uh, going into this Malzahar, can they finish him off? He's very, very low, 30 HP. Oh, looks like he is going to manage to get out of there. Ramus Tremors just needed one more tick and they would have finished that off. So, narrow escape there in top lane. Really good play from Varus. Uh, powerballing into Molzahar. If he doesn't interrupt that ult, then Metallion definitely gets killed. That's the thing about Molzahar ult, so strong one-on-one, -on -one, but in a team fight, it's much less good just because you have teammates there who can interrupt it. Uh, that should be one of your top goals in a team fight uh, if you're playing against a Molzahar. If you see him ulting someone on your team and you're not the one being ulted, uh, just interrupt it in some way. Any kind of stun or knockup will interrupt that Molzahar ult. So if you're Janna, you can uh, stop it with Tornado. You could, I mean, any kind of stun will do it. Uh, Powerball, Powerballing into Molzahar interrupted that too. So just very nice play there. And it's a shame they weren't able to get that kill on Molzahar. If they had had an Ignite, they could have gotten it. If uh, one more tick on Ramus Tremors would have done it. But not quite enough there anyway. So anyway, Varus is picking up his blue again. You can see he picked on that last trip back to base. He got no Magic Mantle um, going towards going towards uh, Merc Treads, I'm pretty sure. Oh, down in bottom lane, managed to get a kill on that Teemo there. Oh, Diva very low. Looks like he was finished off by a Teemo Poison. So uh, one for one kill there. Oh, does Warwick have an Oracle? Yes, yes he does. You can see he picked up an Oracle. So that's a very early or very early Oracle, but a nice buy that's going to allow Warwick to clear all of their wards that they put down. Now Varus uh, pr trying to hold this lane here right now until Metallion can get back here. Uh, one thing you might want to watch is notice how much higher his armor and magic resist goes up anytime he uses his defensive ball curl. Um, really helps protect you really helps protect you from damage when you're playing as Ramus. Uh, something that you really need in order to be able to tank effectively. Uh, anyway, Malphite is still over here. He's a little bit behind the rest of the the rest of the team, so they might have an opportunity if they go for him. Maybe not. Um, if they had Clairvoyance, they could check the brush there. I uh, guess not. Anyway, uh, also Vision Ward here that uh, Varus picked up on his last trip back. That'll allow them to clear words. And indeed, there's, the, there's that uh, Malphite. Knew he was there. Uh, he's going to come in, and yeah, you can see... Uh, Locking him into place with Malzahar ult. Uh, looked like an Ignite there too, I think. Uh, yep, Ignite coming in from, from uh, Malphite. Now they're going to counter gank this. You can see Feckles coming in along with D.Va. Oh, that Malphite's so low, and there's the laser. Going to finish him off. Finalis Funkholm, to use the proper name. But yeah, Lux Laser going to finish that off pretty well. Uh, so they're at least able to get a kill there and go one for one. Although poor D.Va not, not off to the best start. But as I said, he's just been kind of permanently behind the curve so far. Um, oh, and uh, Feckle saying they got Dragon. Yeah, uh, looks like they did. Um, looks like he just CV'd there, and, and uh, that was the case. As a result of losing people in other lanes, they uh, when they shifted two people top, that meant that there weren't as many people bottom. So anyway, one of the interesting things about this game has been that uh, the lanes have really been shifting around a lot. Like, it, oftentimes you'll see the same matchup in a lane for a long time. Hasn't been happening in this game. People keep shifting around lanes, but... Overall, the uh, team on the north side of the map, the purple team, definitely off to a good start. I mean, they've got the kills here, but uh, Teemo getting stuck behind the enemy team. Three guys here. Um, I don't think he's going to make it out, and Varus is going to get the kill there. Um, I guess with auto attack, because uh, it doesn't look like he had his ult. Uh, didn't look like he had his tremors activated. So there, that there's a kill there. They've been hitting an awful lot of Teemo mushrooms in this game. So at some point, someone on their team really needs to get an oracle and starts clearing them. Anyway, Fuckle going to protect himself there with the binding, saves him. Uh, Warwick, Warwick was coming after him. I don't know if Warwick's ult was up. 
he might have wanted to ult that Lux on the tower, but Feckle, nice finding, able to escape out of that. And let's see, looks like looks like Varus is going to go to Baron. I'm assuming he's going to put a ward down there next. Uh, you can see he picked up the Merc Tread, so that's going to help him uh, get out of those stuns and snares. Uh, on a tank like Ramus, who's going to be taking a lot of aggression, I would definitely recommend Merc Treads. I mean, I guess you could buy faster move speed boots. Those would be pretty good too, because they would help you um, with ganking, with coming into other lanes. But generally speaking, Merc Treads work well. That probably would be my recommendation there. Also, notice the Oracle. Varus has picked up an Oracle, so that's another key buy there. As long as he can stay alive, he'll be able to clear those team of mushrooms. He'll be able to clear any wards that the other team puts down. So, a nice buy there. That, now, the, the key thing is, can he stay alive? Is the, is the question. If he dies in the next team fight, that's going to be 400 gold wasted. But, he is the tank. Ramus has pretty good escapability with his Powerball and with his Flash. Oh, nice nice uh, catch there, catching that Teemo. Uh, I'm sure Teemo just put a mushroom down there. Uh, nice catch there. If he can stay alive, then they'll be able to clear up those Teemo mushrooms. If you're playing against Teemo, you really need to have someone on your team uh, pick up an Oracle. Otherwise, the mushrooms just give the other team way too much map control, way too much sight. Now, if they can come in here, they can counter gank this. Yeah, you see Varus coming in here. There's the Rune Prison from Rise. Uh, gonna hit on the Taunt and freeze that Malzar in place. There's Lux Binding. Uh, Sunrise is gonna charge in, and he's gonna get the kill there. Nice team play there. If you saw that when those guys came in after the tower, it just opened up the play here from this side and then again through here. And Varus's team did a really good job of just counter being in the right place to counter gank that and score a kill on that Malzahar player. So anyway, oh, that wall a little bit early there from Anivia. I'm not sure what the purpose of that was. Uh, with three three champs there, they're probably not going to be able to push on that tower. Everyone wants the genie apparently. That's kind of funny. Um, let's see, over here, uh, not sure what they're doing. Oh, it looks like they're clearing up, some, cleaning up some mushrooms with that oracle. You can see they picked off another one there. Uh, looks like we've gotten to the stage where people are starting to roam together as more of a team instead of walking around individually uh, for safety. Seems like a good call. Yep, here we go. Looks like an, a team fight probably going to break out around here. That dragon is going to be up in another minute or so. Uh, like right, right there, Warwick's going to clear that ward with his oracle. This is something you don't see in lower level play, but as you start getting higher up in terms of skill, you will start seeing more and more warding and counter warding in games. This is, let's see, this is, uh, let's see, in terms of uh, elo rating for this game, I know Diva is a 1500 elo player, Metallion is around 1400, 1450, so this is uh, I would say relatively high skill game I mean, it, like I said, it's not like a 2000 skill level game or anything, but, you know, people are pretty decent in terms of this game, I, I think Varus, well I don't think Varus has played enough ranked games to have a rating, but uh, I know from playing with him, he's pretty solid as well, so yeah here we go, looks like a 5 on 5 here, you can see 5 here, uh, there's at least 4 of the enemy team right here, I don't know if they have all 5 yep, there they are, 5v5, looks like a, this could be ARAM, all random all mid right here, right now, everybody gathered together in middle lane. Uh, one thing that they have going for them, though, is this bottom lane is pushing, so that's going to be helpful. Um, anyway, just exchange, look at each side looking for a pick, looking for someone to engage. This team, the team on the top side of the map, the purple team, could, could look to initiate with Malphite's ult. Uh, it's one of the best initiators in the game. That would be something they could look to do. Uh, let's see... Since they have the tower here, it's probably the right decision for Varus' team to play a little bit more defensively. They can try to catch someone in a binding. A Lux binding would be a nice way to engage too. Uh, clearing those mushrooms again with the Oracle really makes a difference. If they were to fight and people started hitting those mushrooms right there, it would do a lot of damage. Could definitely change the outcome of the fight. Anyway, the one problem with this is when everyone's in one lane, you don't get much experience. But look, Malzahar and Warwick are down there, so it's a 5 on 3. This is a great time to engage. They definitely want to fight this. There we go. Uh, freezing people in place. There's the Lux laser. Um, and they're able to clean up two kills, and nobody died. Wow, I thought somebody got taken out. Nope, Feckle managed to survive with no problems. So yeah, the, the enemy team split up in order to uh, go push side lanes, but as soon as they did that, that meant that they were vulnerable here in the middle because it was five on three. And uh, yeah, Varus' team was able to clean that up uh, very effectively. Now Warwick ult there on D.Va, and let's see, uh, are D.Va and Metallion going to be able to get out of this? Um, there's the Lux Binding, so yep, they're going to be safe. They are going to should be able to get out of that. No trouble. And... Um, Let's see, Varus went back to base and picked up Negatron Cloak. Yeah, give himself a little bit extra magic resistance. Seems like a good idea there. Anyway, he is going to top lane in order, I guess, to push that back. So they definitely came out the winners in that last exchange there. Just because the uh, the enemy team, uh, when they sent those two down to bottom lane, sending two to bottom wasn't necessarily a bad play. 
But sending two to bottom, uh, as soon as they did that, the people in middle had to play very defensively, and they didn't do that. Anyway, you see Warwick, he was wording the blue there, wording uh, their blue buff. Um, but since Varus is the Oracle, he can immediately clear that, and that's going to make it safe to take this blue buff. Otherwise, it wouldn't be safe to take this blue, because the other team would have vision, and uh, they would be able to see exactly what was going on here. So again, some of that wording, counter-wording play, and it looks like they're going to give it to Feckles Lux. Uh, definitely seems like the best person to have it on out of this group there. So after being behind earlier, I would say the game is pretty even now. Maybe the purple team on the north side of the map is slightly ahead because they got that last dragon, but now that it's 9 to 9 in kills and they won that last team fight, uh, pretty even overall, I'd say. Looks like the next fight's going to be over this dragon, and notice Teemo has already shroomed up around dragon, exactly what he should do, but because they have the oracle, up oh, looks like the dragon's already gone. So yeah, a purple team right on top of that, doing a nice job. Apparently Warwick doesn't realize that they could see him with that clairvoyance, so um, yeah, nice, a really nice job by the the team they're playing against taking these dragons over and over again it, i mean that dragon was only up for maybe 15 seconds or so and they cleared it so they obviously knew it was about to respawn and we're right on that so yeah pretty pretty good uh, pretty good match here i'd say overall people playing well people not making a lot of mistakes not not dumb stuff good team play from both sides Anyway, yeah, look at that. When when the defensive ball curl is up, he uh, Ramus gains what is it, 125 armor and magic resist. So he, uh, Varus goes from 130 to like 270 or 2 250 260 on uh, both armor and magic resist. So he's almost unkillable while he has that defensive ball curl up. Makes him really strong, makes him really tanky. But when it's not up, Ramus much easier to kill. And uh, you can see Varus has put one point in power ball. He's put the rest in his taunt and into his defensive ball curl. The taunt is really key because it, you need to put more skills in it to increase the duration. Wow, nice flash there. Otherwise, that Malzahar would have been caught by that binding. So has to burn a flash to get out of it, but does manage to dodge that uh, Lux binding there. Yeah, right now, just sort of waiting for the next team fight to begin. Oh, oh there we go. Uh, he, uh, that Malzahar should have canceled that ult. That was a mistake. Yep. See, he managed to catch Feckle with his ult, but as soon as that happened, he was then prey for the, the rest of the team, and they just blew up that Malzahar. Uh, you can cancel Malzahar ult in the middle of it if you hit R again. He, he should have canceled that ult and uh, backed out of it. Uh, Windstrom saying, I hate ranked. Uh, I wonder why. I wanted to smurf lols. Oh, well, oh well. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of the whole smurfing thing. I mean, uh, if you're good at the game, play other people are good at the game. That's how I feel. But anyway, uh, let's see. Uh, so that was a kill. That, uh, that helps to offset that dragon that the other team took a minute ago. It doesn't make up for it completely, but does help a bit. Now it's a four, it's a four on two. They should look to engage here. Uh, or four on three. Uh, no, four on four. So maybe not so good. But wow, Timo just getting blown up so quickly. Metallion getting off a nice misfortune ult. Now that Warwick is taking a lot of damage. He's got an oracle. They really want to take him out. And yes, there they go. Now is Varus going to survive with his own oracle? He's very low. Going to survive with 40 HP. Um, and they're going to go three for one there. Feckle Lux getting taken out. But three members of the enemy team. Now Sunrise coming in to help out. Oh, Varus is going back to base. So let's go back there. Uh, Walzar getting trapped in Rune Prison. He's very low. Uh, are they going to be able to finish him off? Doesn't look like it. Looks like he's going to manage to escape with that Malphite player helping him out there. So a three for one. A, a very nice engage there. Uh, it looked like it was going to be a really easy fight for them to win. Uh-oh, this, this could be trouble here. They need to finish off that tower. It only needs one more shot. Finish it off. There we go. Uh, looks like Malphite is going to sneak away with maybe about 100 HP too. So yeah, that fight was key, uh, not least because it cleared the Oracle off of that Warwick player. Um, I think he had it. Maybe he died before, but I thought that he, I think that he still had it there. Uh, that, so that was very useful, and Varus just barely managed to survive. You know, he did go down to about 35 HP. So three for one, a very good fight. You, the, they were also able to get that mid tower. So now they're only down uh, two to one in towers, although this mid tower has taken a lot of damage too. Um, Varus, it, as I said, able to hold on to his Oracle. He's building toward, looks like a Vanshee's Veil here. Looks like he's building a Catalyst, uh, would be my guess anyway. Pretty useful item for Ramus because he's going to be taking a lot of aggression, going to be taking a lot of damage. Anyway, right now we're sort of in one of the one of the lulls in, in the game right now. You can see after that last team fight, everyone's backing up to uh, push lanes, push lanes back. You can see Feckles farming this top lane, going to push that back. Uh, going to clear up another mushroom. Cleaned up a lot of mushrooms in this game already. So that Oracle I, has probably been worth the 400 gold already, just in terms of uh, the mushrooms they've been able to clear up. Anyway, the next team fight. The winner of the next team fight will probably be able to take Baron off of it, so this next fight will be pretty important. Um, 
I would say that the game is. I would say the game is still very even. Varus's team. Uh, you can see they have the slight edge in kills, but because the other team has taken all those dragons, I still think this game is very even overall. Uh, if I have a second here, I'll look at the items. I don't know if they're going to engage here right now, but let's see. Metallion has finished uh, Infinity Edge, so he's going to be pretty strong. Uh, going to be doing a lot of damage as Misfortune. Um, there's the Lux ult, or not the Lux ult, the Lux binding. Doesn't look like he's going to catch anybody there. Looks like just some harass back and forth. Uh, D.Va has an Archangel Staff, Catalyst, and a Negatron Cloak. I, it looks like he's going for Banshee's Veil, I'm assuming, as his next item there. Has the Sork Shoes. Uh, a lot of people grouped up around mid, so it looks like we're getting ready to fight. Varus charging up his Power Ball here. Um, not going to catch anyone with that Lux Binding. Feckles Lux, he has cooldown boots, he's got Rod of Ages, looks like he's building some more ability power next. That Blasting Wand could go into a bunch of different items. Sunrise has picked up his Ghost Blade and a Heart of Gold. Uh, pretty good, although I'm uh, not, not as big of a fan of Berserker Greaves on, on Xinjiang. I'm not sure that you really need the attack speed on him that much. And you can see Varus, oh, I already talked about Varus's build. Um, their team has gotten ahead in farm, though, so that's a pretty good sign. You can see Metallion's got, uh, got pretty good farm. Oh, Lux getting caught out by that wall. Lux gonna take a lot of damage here from Anivia. Looks like this is gonna be the start of the fight. Malzar are gonna back out of there. Uh... Malphite ulting in over there. Feckle's going to go down immediately. So that's one kill down, but they're going to take down Walzahar. So now it's going to be a four on four. Sunrise going forward. He's going to die, taking way too much damage. Now uh, Warwick getting caught in front of the enemy team. Going to get blown up so easily. Rise killing him with his, uh, with his over... What's it? I can't can't remember the name of the skill there. The one that's on like a three second cooldown. Rise Q, I think it is. So two for two there. Yeah, two for two there on the fight. Uh, even exchange again. So that means no one's going to be able to Baron off this. It looks like they're going to go and try to do Dragon. Uh, yeah, because Warwick is not here. Warwick is not here. Yep, see, Varus knew there was going to be a Mushroom. That's why he turned on his defensive wall curl. Up here comes Teemo going after. Uh, if they, Oh, there we go. Diva's going to blow him up. Nice job there, Diva. Uh, just going to explode that Teemo. And oh no! Oh no, another Teemo Mushroom. Is he going to survive this? Or is he going to get killed? Yes! Just barely going to survive with 30 HP. Yeah, uh, Teemo Mushrooms do a lot of damage. If you hit one at that low on health, there's no guarantee you're going to survive. Uh, surrender vote coming in seems a little premature to me. This game, uh, I, I mean, I would say that Varus's team is a, is ahead now at this point, but still a pretty even game. That Teemo just got a little greedy there in that last, uh, going in 1v3, even if D.Va was low, going in 1v3 is a little greedy. Uh, not generally a good idea. So anyway, Varus has finished his Banshee's Veil now. You can see health, mana, magic resist. Definitely needed the magic resist. Ramus gets a lot of armor as he levels up. I don't think he gets magic resist as he levels up. As a base stat, I'm not 100% sure. This is not a safe dragon for Anivia to be doing. Um, not safe for her to do this by herself. Uh, let's see if she'll be able to get away with this. Um, yeah, see, that Anivia player has to back off. Uh, it, it, it's just not safe to come and do it by yourself when you don't know where anyone else on the team is. They could all be lying in wait. So, yeah, going to have to back off there. Uh, discretion definitely being the better part of Valor. Anyway, there, blue looks like it's back up again, so I'm assuming they'll try to get that for Lux, but it looks like there might be another dragon fight here. You can see the enemy team's coming. There's a Teemo Mushroom, so they'll be able to clear that with uh, Varus's Oracle. Yep, there it is. See, it reappears as he gets next to it. They'll be able to clear that so they don't hit it. Uh, yeah, so, uh, oh, two more up here, Molzahar and Malphite up there in top. Teemo over here. Uh, let's see. Oh, Diva's in trouble. Nice flash to get out of a bad situation. Now they have more champs here in the middle. They can look to engage. Malphite's over here. Malphite and Walzahar are not really with the rest of the group, so they really could look to engage here. Well, while these two are split off, it'll be a 5 on 3 if they can engage. Um, I guess the rest of the team might be going to do Dragon. No, they've backed off here. Um, still, this is not a safe position because there's no tower here. They don't have safety. But it looks like Varus' team is going to go and uh, try to do this Dragon. Try to uh, force the Dragon fight here. Um, if they can fight with no team of Mushrooms in the area, they're probably stronger at this point in time. I think they have enough of an advantage. So it looks like they're going to be able to take this dragon, is my guess. And yep, so they're going to score what I believe is their first dragon of the game. I, I don't think they got that first dragon. It was very close. Now Varus charging up his Powerball. Let's see if he can get in here and uh, land a stun. Oh, Malphite ult hitting nothing. That's a really big deal. They should definitely try to force and engage it right now while Malphite's ult is down. Anyway, Malzahar is not with the team. He's back during in top lane. So they'll have to keep an eye on that as well. Uh, they're probably going to go over and try to cut off uh, cut off this Malzahar player. Yeah, um, they can definitely uh, cut him off here as a team. And if they're able to score a pick there, then they can probably force a Baron off of that. So uh, if they have Metall looks like Metallion's going to stay top, uh, going to stay mid lane. Um, Diva's going to come over here. Yeah, this Malzahar is just this Malzahar is just too greedy. 
Um, you, you can't stick around that long. You're going to die. Um, I mean, there's nothing you can do. And it looks like, I guess, Fickle was able to steal that kill. Yeah. Um, anyway, they're diving after Metallion here in middle lane, but that's going to open them up to a counter gank. Varus coming in there, getting the getting the hit on that Teemo, but Teemo's going to flash away. Uh, binding would have hit that Anivia, but it hit the Banshee's Veil instead. Banshee's Veil protecting her from that binding. So this middle tower is almost gone. Yeah, nope, it is gone. Smoke too soon, it is gone. But Metallion survived that, and they were able to pick off, uh, were able to pick off that kill on Malzahar. As I said, you just can't push a lane like that. Oh, that's an especially bad play because he is a soul stealer. Yeah, you, you, you shouldn't be doing that when he is a soul stealer. Now, now that Malzahar could push that tower, but as soon as people started to disappear from middle lane off of his off of his uh, visibility, he needed to back up and get out. He stayed way too long, so yeah, he got in, you know, three or four more hits on the tower. That's great, but he gave a he gave a kill to the other team, uh, and they possibly could have Baroned off of that. Um, if Metallion hadn't been so low from the engage in middle. So, weren't able to Baron, that was, they, they weren't able to do it off that, but it, potentially they could have. Anyway, Varus is picking up Ruby Crystal, Null Magic Mantle, that's probably a build for Aegis of the Legion, would be my guess, because nobody has Aegis on the team right now. So that would be my guess. Um, Metallion, uh, let's see, he's got a recurve bow now, so he's got extra attack speed. Diva has indeed finished Banshee's Veil. Now he's getting a Sapphire Crystal. Probably going to build uh, Glacial Shroud would be my guess next. Uh-oh, here comes the rest of the team. Uh, so there's that uh, Banshee's Veil going to pop. Just barely getting out of the way of that uh, of that Anivia wall. So, whew, just barely managed to escape that. If you get trapped on the wrong side of that wall, that would have been a very unhappy day. So uh, just barely manages to get out of that. And uh, there's the team of Mushrooms. Uh, oops, oh well. I guess they forgot that they had an oracle there for a minute, but uh, Lux Shield from Veckel going to prevent a lot of that damage. Enemy team has been spotted down here in bottom lane. Now Malzahar has picked up an oracle, so nice job to get an oracle, but he's probably the wrong person on the team to have it. Uh, what's he doing again? Sticking around too long, but up, oh, flash for a flash, going to get out of that. Diva used his flash uh, to try to get catch him in a room prison, not quite able to, but Malzahar's flash is down now. Oh, uh-oh, missed that one. Metallion getting taken down by Timo here. Um, and here we go, we're going to have an engage, probably not a good engage for this team though, because Metallion got taken out early, but uh, wow, a lot of damage here, so much is stuff getting fired back and forth on each side, uh, can't even see it, just noticing Sunrise getting taken down there, Varus still alive, oh, Rise trapping uh, Mal uh, Malphite in that rune prison, so wow, after the, after the smoke clears, it's a 4 for 2, impressive that they were able to uh, do that well in that fight, considering that uh, Metallion is so much of their damage, and he got taken out immediately, but uh, who is it? Diva's Rise is really starting to do a lot of damage now. His mana is starting to scale up, and after starting 0-4, he's now 8-4. So Diva's on a on a tremendous killing streak, and it looks like they're just going to push bottom lane here. Probably a little too beat up. If if that fight happened like right here on the map, they probably could have Baron. But since it happened way over here, that means that they're probably better off just pushing this bottom lane. Uh, they'll definitely get this tower off this push. I can't imagine them not getting it. And then from there they can back up and uh, go back to base, heal, and see what happens in the next fight. Anyway, so yeah, there they go, uh, taking that tower. Anyway, Varus going over here, gonna, he's going to start Bloom. Uh, I don't know if Varus will take this or if they'll give it to somebody else. It, it would be pretty decent on Metallion's Misfortune as well, so that would be an option. I guess we'll see. Um, or maybe they'll just take it on Varus. I mean, Ramus has no cooldown reduction, no mana regen. None of his items give him any kind of mana regen, so wouldn't be terrible on him either. At least he'll get his ult up much more often with that cooldown reduction. Uh, okay, interesting comment there. Not sure what that was supposed to mean. So yeah, they did. Varus did take the did take the blue buff there, and so I guess it'll be on him for the moment. Anyway, again, uh, at this point, Varus' team is definitely ahead as a result of winning these last couple team fights. They really need to look to try to score Baron off of uh, off of a victory. Uh, as I said, they they were they were close to it in that last fight. I think that if they had been a little closer to the Baron, they could have done it. But as it was, they uh, weren't really in a position to do it there. Looks like they're going to try to do get red for someone on their team. They probably should get it for Metallion, I'm guessing, or Sunrise. But Sunrise, I don't think has yeah. Sunrise is under farm compared to Metallion. I mean, you if you're ever wondering about who to give it to, and one person has 229 minion kills and someone else has 97, you probably want to give it to the person who's 229. Walls are hard pushing again. Um, again, uh, feels like he's overexposed here, overpushed. Um, yeah, look at this. If he gets stunned at all, he's dead here. And yep, yeah, so he's dead. Don't even need to wait for it. Yeah, he's he's dead. Uh, this Malzahar has been out of position again and again and again, over pushing, over pushing. So 
yeah, I, I mean, you just can't do this kind of thing. You can't go off by yourself at the 38 minute mark in, in a very competitive game and just run off by yourself and push a lane when you don't see any of the five champions on the other team. So now they can force a Baron fight and they should be able to win it because Malzahar is not here. Um, that's, I mean, oh, but instead it looks like they managed to catch Teemo out here. Um, so, I mean, uh, Warwick going back to base. Yeah, they, they really could force this. Um, with that Mulsahar being down, Mulsahar a lot of their damage. Well, maybe not. He is 2-6. But, uh, I mean, he's got the Rylize. He's got the Void Staff. He does do a lot of damage. Uh, that That's one play I would su I would suggest making in this situation. You certainly don't have to. But the only other alternatives would be to push, and they don't really have a chance to push here with these lanes. Anyway, Feckle getting caught out a little bit behind the team. Gets hit by, gets blocked off by Nivea Wall, but he's going to be able to flash. Can he survive? Oh, Lux Shield protecting him from poison. Uh, there come but no. Nope, he's going to get finished off by that flash for us. Anyway, but Anivia is now stuck behind the team, and Anivia going to flash out of that as well. Nope, Anivia is still over here. I thought that that flash uh, was her going over the wall. Uh, and it looks like they're not going to be able to chase her down. So Feckle almost made a tremendous escape, but unfortunately got taken down there at the end by an Ignite. Anyway, oh, the other team's doing Dragon? Well, that's not a safe Dragon. They can't do this. Um, yeah, this is not a safe play here. Uh, and oh, Varus looks like Varus got a smite steal on that uh, on that uh, dragon there. That's pretty awesome. Yeah, Warwick smited too early, and Varus was able to smite steal that, and they were able to kill Warwick as well. So that is a pretty big swing there. Um, anyway, Malzahar, uh, oh wow, nice ult by that Malphite player. Going to clean up a lot of them. Uh, Metallion's going to get the kill on Malzahar, but. Uh, but let's see, Sunrise and Diva did get taken out there. Uh, Varus is going to taunt, yes, he's going to taunt that Malphite so Metallion can get away. And then Vantus Will is going to protect, uh, protect him against that Seismic Shard. Really nice tanking job here. Uh, still has not died despite having that Oracle. Anyway, even though they suffered the two deaths at the end of that last engage there, a definite win for Varus' team. The, the fact that he was able to roll in there and smite steal that dragon, that was really well done. I, I love seeing that. If you guys have watched my videos, anytime I, I'm talking about a jungler, I always mention this over and over again. Don't smite too early. Don't smite too early. Save your smite until it's it will finish off the dragon or the baron. And that's exactly why. Because if the, other team, if the enemy team jungler comes in there, they can smite steal just like like that and then you have then then you get nothing you know that like then the other team comes in and they take they either take the dragon or they take baron so uh yeah you got to be careful with that anyway nice clairvoyance catching three members of the enemy team wow really well done by feckle um that's gonna uh prevent uh prevent uh metallion from getting caught out by the enemy team here because they can see everybody else the team has got a lot of attack speed yeah he's got he's got a nasher's tooth and uh and a madrid's blood razor so yeah he's got a lot of attack speed Anyway, you can still see this mushroom uh, due to the oracle. Uh, let's see. On that last trip back to base, Varus picked up Aegis of the Legion, as I said before, then picked up a chain vest. Uh, no idea what he's going to build that chain vest into. Oh, probably a Warden's Mail. I think it builds into Warden's Mail, so he can turn one of these Heart of Golds into a Randwins. Uh, anyway, now up to 229 armor. Uh, that's without defensive ball curl, so very, very tanky, uh, getting close to the point of being unkillable right now at this point. Oh, another great clairvoyance. Look at this, catching three more members of the enemy team. Oh, and, and Feckle's even going to land a binding on that Malzahar and uh, do get in some pretty good harass with that ult, too. Remember, Lux ult on a very short cooldown. Yeah, with cooldown boots and Morella's evil tome, uh, he's going to max out cooldown reduction on Lux, and he'll be able to use that ult every 24 seconds, every time it comes off cooldown. Um, I don't feel like this position is all that safe for the enemy team. I mean, they're advanced very far up the map. I, I just don't feel like this is a safe spot for them to be in. I feel like they've gone into the jungle a bunch of times and then gotten themselves caught in bad positions because they were so far away from their tower. Um, so very aggressive play from the purple team on the top side of the map, but I'm not sure it's always worked out for them. Anyway, in score, Varus' team has a has a decent lead. I wouldn't say a huge lead, but a decent lead. Uh-oh, this is trouble. Malphite is caught way, way out of position here. He's so far out, he's so far away from the rest of his team. What is he doing here? Well, fortunately, he's going to be able to escape, but if he gets picked there, that's a free Baron for the other team. You just can't go wandering around by yourself like that. And they're going to give the blue buff to Diva's Rise. Uh, it seems like a nice call there, uh, especially because Feckle doesn't need any cooldown reduction anymore because he's got it maxed out. Yeah, that was that. That is not a good place to be because if he gets killed there, then then they can just take Baron, and that's pretty much the game. So y you know, you really don't want to put yourself in positions like that. Now again, this ward giving them so much map site 
Um, tons of maps. Like, look at Varus charging up, uh, charging up there. He's gonna catch that Warwick. Gonna catch him there. Taunt. Oh, Diva's gonna catch Timo in his in his room prison. Um, Warwick gonna ult, but it's not gonna matter. He's gonna get blown up. Two for zero kills, and they should be able to Baron off of this. Uh, able to clean up those Timo mushrooms with no problems. So yeah, going two for zero and cleaning out the enemy team's jungler. That's basically a free Baron. If the enemy team comes to contest this, they should lose. Varus' team shouldn't have any trouble winning this fight. So. I was saying again and again throughout the game, you can't get picked, can't get picked, and what happened? The enemy team got picked there, and it looks like that's going to cost them this match. And let's see, wait for the smite, well done, no trouble taking the smite. Or no, D uh, uh, excuse me, I missed that, Varus didn't smite at all, so that was a misplay, whoops. Uh, as well as Varus has played throughout this game, that was a, that was definitely a misplay there. Uh, you can't afford to miss your smite. Uh, also, I thought he was going to go back to clean up that mushroom, oh well, maybe they'll get it in a minute. So yeah, now they now they have a significant kill lead. Those two those two kills over here, this Teemo death. Oh, poor little Teemo, look at him there. He looks so sad. Anyway, that Teemo and Warwick death into Baron has has really blown this game open. It it's gone from being a very even match into a point where now Varus' team is very far ahead. And they're gonna basically they have to mess up at this point in order to lose the game. Uh, that is die to an over push, over push a lane, something like that. Um, let's see what, what let's see what he's building that chainmail into. Let's see defense, armor, chain vest. Uh, yeah, it looks. Like, I would guess this is going for Randwins. Um, no, I guess it's not. He's uh, he sold one of the heart of golds for a giant's belt. And uh, interesting. Okay, maybe that's. For, oh no, he's building a sunfire cape. Uh, giant's belt. Chain vest, Sunfire Cape. Okay, also a very good item on Ramus. Um, Sunfire Cape is pretty good because you can pull aggression with it at towers. That combined with Ramus's tremors gives him area effect damage. It means that. With the Sunfire and uh, Tremor's effect, that means the tower focuses you, which is what you want. So it's not focusing, you know, Rise or 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 uh, Lux or Misfortune, anything like that. Uh, still getting hit by Teemo Mushrooms. Nice shield though from Feckle, gonna absorb a lot of that damage. Anyway, um, Warwick way out of position, way out of position here. That means this is a four on five, and they have no chance of winning that. You can see they already took down Malzahar. Oh, Timo getting trapped in, in Rune Prison and then just exploded by uh, Metallion's Misfortune ult. Yeah, I mean, the whole fault there is uh, Warwick way out of position. So it it's a four on five, and they have Baron, so there's no way that they're going to lose that. Uh, okay, that's random. Uh, no way they're gonna lose that particular engage. Now it's just two here. Yeah, they, they, they had to give up this turret. Um, bad play here. At this point, that, uh, that Malphite and, uh, Anivia, they just needed to retreat back to here and defend the inhibitor. They needed to give up this tower. Uh, trying to fight here is a bad mistake. Um, and now it's gonna be five on two. Uh, five on three, maybe they could defend this. Five on two, they definitely can't. Uh, so I, I can't anticipate any trouble pushing through here, especially with that Anivia at like half health. Uh, yeah, Aniv oh, Anivia gonna get trapped in, Ryan, in Rai's rune prison, and uh, there she's, she's not gonna survive that. So there goes the egg, they're gonna take that down too. And uh, now they're gonna get the inhibitor off this. And it's still going to be a 5 on 2, 5 on 3 in a minute when Teemo revives. They can probably just end the game here, would be my guess. Uh, I think they're strong enough because there's only two champs up right now. They should be able to do that. And oh my goodness, look at that. Malzahar just melt so, so easily. Uh, Diva taking a lot of damage, but he's going to get shielded. And together, they are just going to explode that, that Warwick. So yeah, this is this is GG, guys. This is the end of the game for sure. Uh, Teemo can't possibly stop five of them by themselves. Uh, even with that, all they have to do is wait for this next wave of minions. And that's going to be it. Uh, again, notice the shields from Lux absorbing a lot of damage. Uh-oh, Teemo caught in Rune Prison. And it's just a question of who's going to get the kill there. Is Diva going to survive? Yes, just barely. Um, oh, here comes Malphite ulting. Uh, Malphite blaming his teammates. Uh, so so common in, in solo queue. Well, actually no, this isn't rank. This isn't solo queue. This is uh, this is pre-made five. So uh, uh, presumably he knows his teammates. Um, that's something you see more common in uh, in solo queue play. Uh, anyway, yeah, Malphite had a pretty good game, but uh, overall. Um, Overall, not going to be enough. Going to finish off the game here. Going to take down the Nexus and going to end a very competitive, well-played uh, game of five ranks. So, so well done, everybody on this team. And you see the GGs. That's good to see. Nice to see the polite messages. So, uh, yeah, let's go check out the stats, guys. Ferris was nice enough to include a screenshot of the final stats here so I can give it to you instead of using the in-game screenshot. 
Uh, one thing I'll notice here is it looks like Varys has also modded the character portraits here. So those pictures are of Rammus, of Rise, of Misfortune. Hopefully you can just remember who is suit to the game if that's a little bit confusing. Anyway, Varys ending up 5 15 Got the early Oracle, managed to avoid dying throughout the game. I thought played very solidly throughout. I mean, this wasn't... You can go back and look, and I'm sure you can find games that had better Rammus ganks from out of the jungle, more crazy stuff, but just a very solid game throughout. Very well played. Diva in particular. Now, if you remember, Diva started 04 and he finished 12 5 15. So, really nice comeback there. Really, really good job of just playing steady throughout the game and, and not giving up. So, anyway, I often see people who will die like twice at the beginning of the game and then they just like give up and toss the game and stop trying. So, hopefully, if you see stuff like this, it shows that, you know, the game's not over if you die a couple times early on. You know, you can, you can hang in there and still play well. Metallion only got the three kills. It's a little strange. He probably deserved to get a lot more kills because he was doing so so much damage. I mean, you can see he had the Infinity Edge and Madrid's Blood Razor. Got a pickaxe, uh, probably building towards Last Whisper there for for his next item. Just doing a, a really, really high amount of damage. I guess he didn't end up getting the kills, but you can see from the 16 assists he was involved in pretty much all of the team fights. I thought Feckle's clairvoyances were good. I thought he hits on some really good bindings. This was not a support Lux. This was a pure offensive Lux, and it seemed to work out pretty well. And then you see Sunrise ended up with the eight kills. Uh, I thought that Sunrise was out of position sometimes and maybe could have farmed a little bit better, but on the whole, definitely contributed to this game and was doing a lot of damage at the end of the game with that Ghost Blade, so very well done. Overall, I thought this was a well-played game. Not a lot of mistakes. The, the reason why the other team lost the game, though, was because they did make some errors. Ultimately, they just got overly aggressive. There were too many times where someone on the enemy team was wandering around by themselves, either pushing a lane by themselves when they didn't have vision on where Varus' team was, or wandering around in the jungle by themselves when they didn't have vision. Again, Varus' team did a really good job of establishing vision for themselves, using the Oracle to clean up the team of mushrooms, using wards at times, using Feckle's clairvoyance. I, I think that they just had more sight. And the enemy team was over aggressive, and that was what really cost them the game. The, the key fight was the two picks that led to them getting Baron. But they had people get picked before that too. Malzahar in particular was out of position a whole bunch of times, just played way, way too aggressive, was not with his team. And if you contrast that to the way that Varus's team stuck together and really moved together as five all throughout the later stages of the game, as opposed to the other team, which was just wandering around solo, that was why they were able to score a lot of those kills. So anyway, really nice game. Thanks for sending it to me, Varus. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. I know I'm splitting some of my videos between this channel and the Button Mashers channel, but I'll still put up stuff on my channel too, so keep an eye on this. Anyway, thanks again for watching. I'll see you guys again later. And uh, if you're around on Tuesday night, come and check it out. We'll be playing on Tuesday. So take care, guys.